Hey everybody, welcome to the Soulful Eclectic. I am your host, Diana Collins, and I want to welcome you to today's episode. If this is the first time you're visiting me, well, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me. And if you are returning, I want to say welcome back, welcome back. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you so much. So last week we missed an episode because I had a play that I was doing and I was just so wrapped up in into that that um, I had to like step away and prioritize. So not that you guys are not a priority, it's just that uh, I just had life just consume me. So I had to take a, a little bit of breather and do that self-care and reorganization. So I am back. Um, promise not to go so far, so long. Um, without doing an episode again, because, um, you know, (laughs) you forget about me and I don't want you to ever forget about me. But anyways, as I have a pity party right there, um, I want to just thank everybody for being supportive and those who came out to see the show or watch the show from home because it was a virtual production. I want to say thank you all for taking the time out to watch the production. The children's plays, the plays were written by children or young adults. And I give them all credit for the talent that they had. The adults that performed these plays were all very talented and I thank them all for the time and getting to know them as well. Um, and the directors were great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Well, um, this episode, wow, I just don't know. Last week, last week before last, we talked about sex and boy, oh boy, was that an interesting com- conversation? Um, because you know, it go, you can easily go down a rabbit hole with that one. But um, it was good to talk about because, you know, we don't really get to talk about those things. Um, I I know I don't share those things with anyone, especially um, when it comes to, you know, the change as we are getting older. Um, And I commend anyone who is my age and older who is out there getting their groove on. And I'm like, you go, ladies and gents. I love your spirit. But um, yeah, I'm not there yet. And it's okay. And it's good to know where you are and accept where you are or be willing to change where you are. And I'm at that. I'm willing to change where I am. But yeah. But anyway, so I am embarking on so many new journeys. And I know a lot of us are like I have like friends of mine who we will be talking to who are embarking on some great changes and challenges in their lives. And they want to share their experiences with with you all which I thoroughly appreciate. And then, you know, myself embarking on new challenges and new journeys. It's, it's just, it's an amazing time to be a human. And it's also a sad time to be a human. As we see, there's a lot of hate and discourse going on throughout the world. And it saddens me to see that we see, we still see each other as um, less than and treat each other as less than and you know, go back to that, I like to say, ar- archaic way of thinking, and it, it just shouldn't be. We, I, I would have liked to think that we as humans have evolved to something that is um, much greater than that. And then being in healthcare where I don't have, or I, and I choose not to have that opportunity to, to pick and choose who I want to like and who I want to take care of, and the fact that there are some humans that feel like they they can when they're in healthcare and it's it to me it's just totally wrong because that's not what we went into healthcare for. We went into healthcare to take care of people, to teach people, to educate people, um, and to help individuals. And the fact that you can sit there and say, Well, yeah, I choose not to take care of you because you come from this country or you're this color or you're practice this religion. I it just doesn't make sense to me and it does it goes against everything that the you know I, I know that the American Nurses Association stands for let alone me as a human being so yeah it just that that part saddens me but anyways um 
to the whole purpose of today. I'm sorry, I got off on a tangent talking about humans, uh, you know, and their discourse with, I'm going to say with themselves, because you have to be unhappy within yourself to treat other people the way people treat individuals. But anyways, getting off of that note, um, we just closed on our show. Uh, it was a virtual play. As I was saying, I was busy with that this week. So we just closed on that and I'm just excited for that. I'm excited for the opportunities that are coming up and, you know, just reflecting on different things and thinking about self-care and being self-aware. And how many of you are actually practicing self-care for yourselves? Like we're so busy trying to make that dollar. We're, we're working to, um, we're, we're working to live, not living to work, you know? And I find that we're always chasing that that next paycheck and as much as we need it and I'm not saying we don't need it we we all definitely need it and um as I tell individuals when I have conversation about homelessness and houselessness I was like we're all one to two paychecks away from being um houseless and homeless if we lose our jobs and I'm not saying we all I don't want to let me not broaden it that way but most of us are in that realm where you know we're just about almost uh, that that close to being homeless and houseless and as we are seeing um, if you guys aren't if you don't own your home and you are out there renting uh, apartments and houses it's hard harder than it has been and I've been renting places before we bought our home I've been renting for 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 years like our kids have been raised in apartments and rented houses. So, you know, we, I've gone through the trajectory of the change in, in housing and the affordability of housing. So I, I'm seeing it firsthand. Um, and it's disheartening because it's harder and harder for individuals to, to even find a place to live. I mean, looking at the economy right now, to rent an apartment in a pretty decent neighborhood, you have to be making three times what your rent is before they allow you to even put in an application. I'm like, what the heck is that? Right? And and to live somewhere where you can't where you can actually afford, um, sometimes it's not even safe. And 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 I hate to say that, but um where you find places that are within your price range that you can afford comfortably, um, it's not in the best of neighborhoods. And it's it's just disheartening to see how we all have to, we we're all struggling in some form or fashion. Like my children, um, they're out there looking for apartments and things. And one has an, a lovely, like subsidized apartment uh, that goes according to her pay how much she pays her her rent i mean how much she earns pardon me and so which is great but now she feels like she's stuck because if she leaves then she's going to have a harder time finding a place number one and then maintaining the affordability of it number two so she's like mom i don't want to live i don't want to leave here she says but I'm really tired of being here but I'm scared to go somewhere else because I might not be able to afford it and that is so true. And then I have a, my other daughter who is in a different state um, and she's saying the same thing. She's like, mom, I'm, I, I want to have this apartment, but they want me to have show that I make three times the rent. And she's like, that's not feasible. She's like, I make this and I know I can make my rent monthly without a problem and pay my bills. But they want me to show that I have, I, I, my income is three times what the rent is. And she said, that's insane. Um, she said, is, and she's asking me if, if it's like that everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, babe, it's, it's like that everywhere. Everywhere wants you to, to show and prove that you make three times, um, what your rent payment is. And that's due to the economy. That's due to people losing their jobs and not affording things, um, due to COVID that's due to, so many things that have impacted that, that it's, it's now made it difficult for us as humans and individuals to find places. So um, when individuals start complaining about the increase in the houseless population, um, this is why. This is why we have people living in their cars and 
you know, um, renting Airbnbs for long periods of time because they can't find places to live and, you know, coming back home to live with their parents and stuff. And, and I always tell my kids, you never have to worry about living on the street. As long as we have a roof over our heads, you can come home. This is always home. And uh, one of the things that I, I like to tell you, I, I don't, my kids, I didn't raise them to 18 and then you're on your own. I think that's utter BS. And I hate that that's the way the mentality of the, the, this United States is, but I always tell my kids, I said, you can come home anytime, anytime you think that you need to regroup, whatever you need to do, come home. You always have a place at home. And I, I don't think we say that enough to our children. Um, and I think that is one of the things that gets lost because Kids feel like they can't come home, um, but and or they feel like they're a failure if they do come home, and they don't want to be seen that way. And I think we need to change that. We need to change how we view our children, and if they come home, don't they're not losers. They're not less than. They're not, um, and unless they show you otherwise, let me say that. Unless they show you otherwise, because you do have those few that are really just really don't want to do anything with their lives. And that is a totally different conversation. That's a totally different um, thing to deal with. And that's, that's that you handle that definitely differently. But if you know your kids are out here busting their butt, they have an education, they went to the school, they got a degree, they have um, a way to make a, a wage, but it's just not enough to maintain their own life lifestyle, you know, outside of, you know, playing and, and doing things, you know, I, I, I say it as playing, but going out and hanging out with friends outside of that, if they are not able to, to find and make ends meet, but they're working and bringing home money, then yeah, why not? I am all about those generational households where you got more than one generation living under one roof and, you know, um, everyone is pool in their resources to better themselves. I think individuals that come from other countries like um, African communities, Asian communities, um, Jewish communities, all those communities that live together and, and, and build on their resources, they have it down. And I think being raised here has changed our thought process for those who are born and raised in America, okay? I am I am African descent, so my ancestry is definitely is from Africa, but I have been raised over the generations here in America and definitely have seen the differences over the my growth period on how you know, things could have been different. Not saying better, worse, or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying different and how the way we are raised has changed our thought process and how we see our children and how we see raising our children and improving our lifestyles as adults. And I, I just think that we should change our vocabulary. Give our kids the option to come home as long as, again, they're being a responsible adults, having a job and doing what they need to do. I don't see why they can't come home and, and be a functional part of the home unit as, you know, as a unit. Um, it, it's just, it, it boggles my mind and it hurts my soul to see my kids struggle. And, you know, I tell them, you can come home. I'm like, no, I don't want to come home, you know. I, you know, I'm struggling, but I, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, it's what I want to do. It's bringing me closer to my goal. All these things. That's fine. Long as you know that you can always come home, that's my big thing. And I always want my kids to know that they can come home. But that that's just really, that's just really what is, has been on my spirit as I see society as I see children my own included just just out here struggling trying to make it um and I just it breaks my heart it really does but um it's it's one of those things that 
You know, we, we just got to do better as humans and take care of each other and, and just be better and do better. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of meditation and a lot of thinking and reflecting and spitting time with, you know, my husband and loved ones as much as I can, because it's just, it, it, it saddens me, you know, that this is, this is what we have and this is what we're going through. But anyways, um, that was just something that I was thinking about. So I thought I'd just go ahead and, sh and share that with you guys. <laughs> I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason for that thought process, except for the fact that it was on my spirit at the moment. But the, the episode today is really to talk about um, today's society and looking at riches. And I was reading an article and it said that it, it was about individuals who are famous, who don't want to be famous. And it made me think because my husband often asked me, why, why is it that now I, in this stage of my life, I decide to go into acting and things like that. And, and he's like, you, you, is that what you're chasing fame and, and all in fortune and notoriety and all that. And I, I said no, because it really is no, but you know, he says, then why he said, because, you know, people are, are going to be like in your life constantly, you know, wondering what you're doing and then you know, those kinds of things and how, how you live in your life. And then it came to me as I was watching, as we were, we were watching something and, oh no, 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 my, my brother sent me something and it was about Kanye and he was at a game for, you know, his son and he was watching the game and people were filming him cheering and, you know, and enjoying his, his son's game. And he was, and he got upset and he smacked the phone out of the person's hand and, you know, of course gave him a few choice words. And then um, it was one of those things where you think about it, it's like, wow, you can't even have a normal life. Like everyone is like so fixated on what these celebrities are doing and how they're doing. And it's like, guys, these are humans and they have a right to um, go out and, and live their life. And, you know, then you got other people who are like, well, if they are in the limelight, then they should expect, you know, people to want to see them and film them and things like that. But no, not when they're enjoying the comfort of their children and, you know, having that, that time with family. I mean, nobody wants that. It's like, I don't want people running up to, to me while, oh yeah. And, you know, in, in filming me, I know you. And it's like, no, that's, that's no, that this is my private time. So, um, yeah, just I just wonder how how people feel about that. It, 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 do you expect? I mean, he was wrong. Don't get me wrong. He was wrong for smacking that out her hand. He was like, nobody deserves uh, to be ass assaulted in any form for any reason. That I'm not definitely not condone, condoning that bad behavior. But what I'm saying is that there, you know, there's a way to um, get your point across without assaulting somebody for sure. But um, so, but anyways, that, that led me to think about what it is and why it is that I do what I do. And I actually do it because I really enjoy it. Like I enjoy teaching. I really do. I enjoy what I do as far as engaging with the students and being a part of their journey as they are embarking on their nursing career. Love it completely, but I don't know. I don't think I want somebody in my face with a camera 24 seven. I mean, I enjoy being on the set. That's the time I want to be in the limelight. If I'm at a party or an event, absolutely. But if I'm out enjoying time with my family, yeah, I can be pretty annoyed with that. I'm just saying, but you know, to each his own and you got to handle it differently. And I don't know how I will handle it once I am, famous and you know in the limelight kind of thing so we'll see what do you think but the other thing that I was um thinking about was how being out there like that affects our self-care and well-being that's a lot of stress like I know I'm stressed with my job like I'm stressed out of my freaking mind with 
you know, grading and making exams and being present and being on when you're in the classroom and at work, so forth and so on. I am stretched thin completely. And, um, and honestly, I, because my whole life has been built on being this busy. I mean, I've always been this, um, my husband calls me a workaholic. Um, I've always had more than one job. And um, it's strange when I don't have more than one job, I feel like I'm missing something, like I'm bored, like I'm not bored, but like I'm not being a productive individual. So therefore, it's like I always toss something else into my mix. And this is what I did this time. Not that, and, it's, and it's not in a bad way because I love everything that I'm doing. I love the businesses that I created. I love the um, product that I make. I love being... Um, an actress and I love when I'm able to do a show and, and be on the runway. I love all that to pieces. I really do. It's, it's really who I am, but, um, I would like to find one thing that will help me cultivate all of these things. You know, that, that's really the goal. I want to find one thing that will allow me to do all of these things. And I know we're all out here doing the same thing. Like I was talking to um, my brother and we were talking about, you know, you know you, those of individuals who have become uh, Instagram famous, TikTok famous, YouTube famous, those kinds of things. And I say, you know, to him, I appreciate all those individuals that became famous based on the content they create. They are truly um, entertainers and creators. And I kudos to all of them. Like that is, that's a job people. I don't, I know it seems silly. Like when you see it and they, they are doing all these crazy things, but that's a job. I, the content I create, I said, I put out is because it's all my spirit. The content I pre create is because that's where I am at that moment to create content like that on a regular basis for a paycheck, that is difficult. I'm just saying that. Um, I thought about it at one point, like I was going to be a content creator. I, you know, I do have my YouTube channel for my business and I was going to be this big nurse guru on, on YouTube and do all these great things. But it takes time. And people, I see why people have to quit their day jobs or nine to fives to do this thing because it it really does consume a lot of time just to think of a creative thing or, or project to create, to put out there and then to execute it in the time it takes to, to build that execution and get it out there. And then the time it takes to edit it and, and, and put it here and put it there. It is not easy. It is not easy. And I give kudos to all those people, all those creators who are out there doing their thing you go, you go boys, you go girls, you go they, them, everybody, y'all go, because I am, I, I'm going to be honest, I struggle with it constantly, like, my YouTube is, has, like, barely any content on it, and my TikTok, I had to slow down on the content, in the summertime, it's a little easier for me to do content, but in the fall and in the winter, it's really hard to, to really put out any content. So, um, yeah, my, my TikToks are just like far and few between. And again, it's when I feel like I have that energy and I feel like I'm at the, my most creative. That's when I can do it because the moment for me, the moment it starts feeling like work, I don't want to do it. When it, that creative piece and that fun is no longer there, it takes away from it for, for me personally. So therefore, it changes my outlook on putting the content out. I don't look at it as fun anymore. I look at it as work. And I think that's one of the things that stops me from really going out there to be that content creator for TikTok. I can't, I, 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 I can't constantly be out there doing that or I'm, it's, it's difficult for me to be out there doing that. I don't like to say I can't. It's difficult for me to be out there to do that because um, it, it's, it's, it's 
hard for me to be that creative all the time. I have creative spurts. And funny enough, when I have those creative spurts, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Who's getting up at three o'clock? Let me, let, me, let me stop myself, sorry. Because there's somebody out there who gets up at three o'clock to do these things. Um, but I personally am not getting up at three o'clock in the morning and turning on my camera to do a TikTok. Uh, no. So I try to be that person to write down the ideas and, you know, go from there. But then that moment has passed for me, if that makes sense. That, that moment has, like, gone and, like, okay, so now what do I do? Now that uh, I no longer have that inspiration to, to do this TikTok um, because that, that ship has sailed. Now I'm, I'm on to a different thought process and now how, how do I... How do I not navigate that? How do I navigate that? So yeah, so I like I said, I, I truly appreciate all those individuals who are out there doing their thing, bringing TikTok to life, and you know, shaking it, rattling and rolling. Um, keep doing it um, because we love it. It keeps us all motivated to to do new things and to try new products, and it's working for what the goals are for it. It, it really is, but. Um, I just, it's not me. And a lot of the things that I do as far as being an actress and, and the model and things like that revolves around being on social media and social media and me are just, I guess we are, we're that ship that pass in the night because I find it really a challenge. It's, it's really a challenge for me. And I, I do try to be better at it. I really do, um, is just that I don't know hmm, how that works, how, how it would work, and it, and it constantly take away from, you know, that relationship, especially the relationship I have with my, my husband, because right now it, it's already a, a strain because of, of all the things that I am currently doing. He's like, oh, you're doing one more thing. Oh, you're doing one more thing. And it's like, no, I'm this is this and I enjoy it and he's like but it takes away time from him and I have to be mindful of that I have to be respectful of that that you know this is really of this is togetherness and it's it you don't want anything to take away from your your relationship definitely not that so now I have to rethink about it and say okay how can I do this in still meet my needs because I want to do it and, and still meet the needs of my husband and, and, and his companionship that he requires, right? Um, so that's, that's the other thing that keeps my mind going as far as maintaining that work-life entertainment balance that exists in my world. But yeah, so I just wanted to, to come on real quick and share that and see where where everybody was and um, coming down soon, we're gonna do a panel uh, with a couple of individuals that have been on the show before, but never been on the show together. So this, that will be quite interesting. So take a listen and let us, let us know how you feel about it. But in the meantime, think about it. What, how do you see yourself in your creative moments when you look back at your social media, TikToks, Facebook, Reels, whatever it is that you are doing in your social media world, how do you feel? Do you remember how you were feeling when you were creating that? Is it Was it something that you felt like you needed to do or was it just something that you wanted to do to try to get yourself out there to become that TikTok or Instagram or whatever famous that you're trying to do? You know, because it all reminds me of that um, Black Mirror episode where she was constantly worried about how many followers she had and how many likes she got and how people were judging you based on the amount of likes you got. And then once those likes, you know, diminished, it diminished you as your value to the society. So, yeah, I mean, if you've never seen that Black Mirror episode it, I think it was like season two or something like that but it was really it, it it really opened my eyes I was like wow and I saw this a while ago but it opened my eyes because I was like oh my gosh that is so true like everyone is always doing something and posting and and 
want to see how many likes they get and things like that and get acknowledged. And I'm like, wow. I, and I just laugh because I'm like, I'm not that person. I put it out there to share. I put, you know, update pictures and, you know, because it's, I have family that, you know, I don't get to see and don't get to see me. So, you know, that's my update to everybody, but I don't really, I don't put it out there to see how many, oh, let me see who said they liked it. Who, let me see who said they comment. No, I appreciate it. Believe me, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, but um, I, I, I think if I can touch one person, two people maybe, <laughs> I can be greedy and say two, um, that makes my day. That makes my day. And I, and I appreciate it. And that when you sit down and I reflect back on, on it, I, I truly do appreciate that. So um, yeah, so definitely let me know what you think. And I, I look forward to hearing it. So take care of yourselves and each other. Just so that I don't forget, I do want to thank my sponsors for being a part of the show and sharing their resources and information with us. So thank you to the Collins Education and Resource Management who offer uh, tutoring services for healthcare professionals for a fee, of course, and also the um, their skills in community education and healthcare advocacy, as well as diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, they're available for conferences, uh, discussion panels, and also workshops within the community, within businesses. So reach out at collinserm.com. And also, thank you so much to Divine Nubian Essentials. I love the skin I'm in, and I love the product that is put out. It is healthy for me, it's healthy for my hair, it's healthy for my skin. Um, I can use it on me, my husband, my, my nieces and nephews, my kids use it, and um, we just love it. And thank you so much for being a part of the show. And if you haven't tried Divine Nubian Essentials, hair and skincare products, you are missing out. I'm telling you, um, yeah, I'm just loving how healthy my skin is, how I have decrease in breakouts, how healthy my hair is, and how, how good it is for me, and how good it is for the environment. It's 100% vegan and definitely 100% safe to use on any one skin. But if you have allergies, of course, you should be mindful of that. And if you have fragrance uh, sensitivities, definitely, but they're not heavily scented. And so, which is one of the things that I like, but give it a shot and let us know how you like it. And thank you to also Unapologetically Beast. I love Victoria and I can't wait till she comes on, Victoria Thompson, who has Unapologetically Beast. And I will definitely post her information out there. I'm sorry, I don't remember it by heart and I don't have it written down in front of me to share with you, but I definitely will share it in the post. Uh, but I, I just love it and I am ordering my t-shirt today. I know I've, I've been saying it for weeks, but today I am ordering my t-shirt because honestly, people, I'm just winging this shit. So with that, take care of each other, take care of yourself, make sure you do self care and make sure you set boundaries where there is need, where is needed. Okay. It's okay to say no. And this is something I'm learning. So I'm sharing it with you. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank you for sharing. And I hope you patronize these businesses. You take care.